Kabul by Nigel Walker, communications advisor, Norwegian Afghanistan Committee. He joins us from Kabul. Nigel, I know these are tough times for you and others there, but give us a sense of what is the plan now going ahead, given the kind of images that we've seen today, people rushing to the airport, desperate to somehow or the other get out of Afghanistan or out of Kabul at least. Give us a sense of is there a plan in place or is it now day at a time? Uh, good evening. Uh, I can tell you what we've been told. Um, my understanding is that the Taliban have actually taken control of the um, the airport of uh, the civilian side. Right. Um, my understanding is the U.S. wasn't able to um, secure the, the civilian side. And from my experiences today, no one was able to secure the military side because it was closed uh, all day. We had uh, planned to uh, travel there this morning. Uh, we were turned around by the Taliban and we attempted to travel there again this afternoon. And we were told um, by the military part of the airport that, that, uh, that it was locked down, that there was too much chaos going on outside. And I think we, we've seen a lot of those images today. So are you saying that as of now, as we speak, Nigel, the U.S. Uh, 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 the U.S. military no longer has control of the air, uh, airport. The airport is now under Taliban control, so the Taliban will virtually decide which plane takes off and which doesn't. On the civilian side, that is my understanding. Yes, because there are no civilian flights right now. There's no commercial flights right now. So how it affects the. Uh, how it affects the evacuation of the U.S., I have no idea. I haven't haven't heard many helicopters today, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, but I can't say if if the, it is controlled or the military side is controlled by the Taliban. So uh, we're still trying to understand for those who are trying to flee out of Afghanistan, those who are desperate to get out, what are their options then, Nigel, at the moment? There aren't any options. There are options. The best options are to stay um in a safe place stay at home stay in a safe place hunker in in place i would not recommend anybody go to the airport right now we've seen the images mm -hmm. we've seen uh we've seen chaos on the streets too to a certain extent mm -hmm. can't really comment on that because i haven't been out too much this evening um but from the images we're seeing from the information we have mm -hmm. it's tough i really understand that there's a lot of desperate people we've seen that today but, I, yeah, it's, there are no options to exit through the airport right now. So, so what, you know, give us a sense, your sense of Kabul as it stands today. It, clearly, the Taliban have taken over the presidential palace. They've taken over the civilian airport. Where does that leave uh, those who uh, are seen to be either peacemakers or attempted to broker peace or those who are seen to hold strong views about a Taliban takeover? Is there fears of reprisals? How safe are you and others out there? Well, I can only share with you my experiences uh, from early this morning when we tried to get to the airport. Um, within two blocks of our house, um, we were flagged down by a Taliban member who, who allowed us to move through to the next um, part of town, but we were actually stopped at a big intersection in Wazir Akbar Khan mm -hmm. by, the, um, by the Green Zone, by a, kind of a more of an, a, an official checkpoint, seven or eight uh, Taliban um, people, and we were told that we were not allowed to um, move to the airport without permission from them, mm -hmm. um, from, from the government, which we were able uh, to get later on. However, we weren't able to get to the airport because it was uh, shut down and in chaos. Mm -hmm. um, my view, my understanding was from what I saw this morning was that the Taliban was in control of the streets, mm -hmm. that they were not threatening, they didn't threaten us, and they were trying to move things along as smoothly as possible. Mm -hmm. I can't comment on kind of during the day when it gets busier mm -hmm. about what was going on, but I heard that there were people on the street shops were open more people were coming out mm -hmm. people were eating ice creams mm -hmm. so yeah the, there are no police or military here no no police no military no from the old government no 
so the streets are being run by the Taliban, no police, no military. What about the fact that we've seen, interestingly, Nigel, at the airport, no women or children who are part of the groups trying to escape, mainly men. Are, are the women just too frightened at the moment? And are they, uh, you know, being forced to stay indoors? That would be hard to say. Um, I would imagine from uh, past experience that there's a lot of fear. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I did see children at the, uh, uh, in the images that I think we've all seen and women at the airport. Mm -hmm. um, but I would, I would imagine that that would be a, a fear that, that, that they would have given, you know, the past history. Um, I'd want to stay positive and hopeful that that will not be the case. Uh, we, we'll, sh we'll see, right? Right. Uh, what about markets, uh, the overall city, anything open at the moment? Uh, or is there, was there this fear because there is this vacuum uh, or uh, because of the transition taking place, no one really wants to take any chances? Are shops, markets, anything open as you went out this morning? Yeah, there were shops open. Yeah, and um, from, from our uh, Afghan associates during the day, things got busier, shops opened. Mm -hmm. um, but even early this morning, shops were open, people were on the street. Yeah, absolutely. It seems they felt that the things were returning back to normal, to as, as normal as it could be under the circumstances. You know, when you say normal under the circumstances that can be, where does this leave the entire efforts that were on to try and find some kind of a solution that would be free of violence? Is that is that something that you feel is possible? Uh, uh, you know, groups like yours, the Norwegian Afghanistan Committee, groups that have tried to work out a kind of, you know, both rebuild Afghanistan as well as work out a transition to a more peaceful uh, Afghanistan. Do you see that at all happening? Um, yes, I do. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful it will happen. And um, I know that um, prior to the, the last couple of weeks, um, we had been working with the Taliban on some with some of our programs in the in the more rural areas, mm -hmm. and that they've uh, reached out to us and for us to hopefully continue that. Um, so I'm I'm hopeful. I, I have to stay hopeful. I have to stay positive because the alternative is um, it's pretty grim. The alternative is pretty game, but you know we are looking at it again now from a maybe an Indian perspective in a way that uh, the U.S. have left uh, Afghanistan in a complete mess. You know, after having invested so much of time, uh, people, uh, uh, resources, what what happens? You are desperate to get out of the country, and there seems to be this complete chaotic situation building up. So while you're being hopeful, Nigel, is there also a sense that? Uh, do you share the sense of betrayal that some people within Afghanistan and outside feel at the moment? Absolutely, 100%. Uh, you know, I'm a U.S. citizen. Um, the, 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 this has, has been disgraceful. It's been, it's been absolutely disgraceful and mm -hmm. based in, in no understanding mm -hmm. of, of where the country was. As, as, you know, an interesting thing is this. Mm -hmm. Yes, the American government has let down the uh, Afghan people in incredibly, mm -hmm. devastatingly. Mm -hmm. but they, they're not even able to evacuate their own people. Mm -hmm. You know, They've, they're letting down their own people who, mm -hmm. who are not able to, you know, leave. So there's deep sense of betrayal on many sides. It's, 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 just, it's a disgrace. You know, you're, you're saying it's a disgrace what therefore who do you do you feel who do you hold responsible is there an individual is this about just a successive of governments particularly from washington that have mishandled the situation uh, you know intelligence teams that got it so horribly wrong didn't think that the taliban march would be so rapid uh, uh, is it something that on the ground uh, a sense of groundswell of uh, uh, of anger possibly uh, that exists against uh, perhaps uh, the the us forces what who do you hold responsible for what's gone wrong nigel i mean all of the above really i mean you can't point the finger at one particular person or group or time it's just a disaster's happened just um not from one thing there are a collection of events that happen um 
you know, we have to look at the previous government and the issues of corruption that were never dealt with. We have to look at um, how Western media have have given up reporting, given up investing in bureaus mm -hmm. in countries like this for 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 the sake of uh, um, you know uh, money. Basically, they don't invest in foreign news, so we never really have a, a true understanding of what is going on. We can say that you know foreign policy to some extent is is based on. Um, news coverage, its influence. Well, when you have no news coverage and you have no investment in, in, in places like this, then how are you going to get your intelligence right? How are you going to get your intelligence right when you don't have, you know, um, native, native, uh, 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 lo local speakers? Uh, the, there's, there's lots of blame to go around. I mean, this since 20 years now, 20 years now is when, when these blunders started. What, it, who, yeah. Nigel, what is the best case scenario for the weeks ahead and the worst case scenario? Give us a sense. What is your best hope? What's your worst nightmare? Best case scenario is that the Taliban um, have include uh, all Afghan society and respect all Afghan society, Afghan women, Afghan children, and and build a build a government that serves everybody and and gives rights to everyone. Um, I'm not saying we need to, you know, um, ignore their their beliefs, but that I feel there has to be some. Um, development because we're we're living in a in a, in another we're living in a in a different world uh, my best case scenario is is that is that so your that best case scenario is the best case scenario is this taliban government builds on some of what was done in the last 20 years particularly in terms of women's education infrastructure the efforts that were put in to try and bring the afghan society back on track what's the worst case scenario nigel we all know the worst case scenario. Everybody's reporting on what what happened before. I, you know, I I don't like thinking about it. Maybe that that makes me uh, naive. I don't know. I, the, the worst case scenario, I don't want to think about. So I just I want to try and be positive, and I want I want to encourage people to engage and and support and support the Afghan people, organisations, governments, media. Uh, just to understand, just to understand, Nigel, from the ground, food and food and supplies freely available at the moment. Uh, internet, phone lines, all working. Um, as far as I know, yes. So you've had no shortage of food and supplies at the moment. W I don't know. Our organization doesn't, but we're in a bit of a we're in a different situation, right? I mm. mean, we're 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 in a privileged situation. But have you heard of people who are struggling to get sort of their daily needs, their supplies at the moment, apart from the fear factor, just getting their lives in some kind of order at the moment? You know, I haven't. And um, I, I think that in the last couple of weeks, when uh, the uh, uh, displaced people were coming into Kabul, there was a lot of need there. And I think those areas that were giving services to those people experienced also the need of people who lived in Kabul. So I think there was need here. There's always been need here. Have I heard that that's gone up? I haven't, but I can't honestly say I would know right now. It's something I can definitely talk to uh, uh, our staff about. In conclusion, Nigel, and I know these are tough times for everyone, uh, you know, how are you going to stay on in Kabul, if I may ask? Or do you believe that more and more uh, groups like yours will have to abandon Kabul? I'd like to, I'd like to stay on. I'd like, I, I know, I know organizations are committed to staying here. Absolutely, 100%. And I hope other organizations make that decision. I think it's going to take some stability of travel, mm -hmm. for, for example. Um, that's going to be a, a, a big issue. Um, it's going to take some guarantees mm -hmm. from from the from the Taliban government that people are going to be able to work, and then we're going to have to see where that where that line is.
mm-hmm. of what projects can continue. Um, yeah. Are you going to have a good night's sleep today, or are you uh, are you someone who today is going to sort of pray for a better tomorrow? Yes, I will, and I, I am expecting a better night's sleep tonight because uh, um, things are a little bit more predictable for us. Mm-hmm. Um, last night was incredibly frantic. So, what happened last yes. night? What What did you go through last night? Well, we had uh, we had associates at the airport who were caught up in the um, who were caught up in the in the violence at the airport in the evening, and were 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 some of the people who were fleeing mm-hmm. across the tarmac. Some of them were able to seek refuge at the the U.S. military. Um, very lucky that mm-hmm. they weren't shot. If you can imagine uh, a bunch of people running towards the American military, mm-hmm. we all know how that goes, right? Um, so they're very fortunate. A lot of those people were turned back to the civilian side. Flights were cancelled. Mm-hmm. I think all commercial flights were cancelled. Um, there was a lot of uncertainty. There was a lot of um, maybe we could get a flight out this morning. So there was preparing of that. Mm-hmm. There was preparing of potentially private and charter flights for for other staff members. And so there wasn't a time when you could, uh, you know, put your head down for 20 minutes because you don't want to miss that. Mm-hmm. That message that, that says maybe go now or maybe if you get these people to here in this point of time, we can get them out. So I think we know that that right now a lot of that can't happen. Mm-hmm. So tomorrow's a new day and um, let's 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 all be hopeful. I'm, I'm hearing some sound in the background. What is that, Nigel? That is the uh, that's the, the nightly prayer. OK, that's the nightly prayer. Uh, look, Nigel, you've taken time off. I know these are tough times and uh, for you to come on air and give us a sense of all that's happening in and around you. Stay well, stay safe. And uh, let's hope, as you said, uh, we'll have a better tomorrow. Uh, that, that hopefully, we'll, it's going to take some time, but hopefully we'll have a more stable situation come tomorrow morning. Thanks very much, Nigel, for joining me here thank- on India Today. Thank you. Th- thank you very much and for taking the time. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, thanks.